welcome to a traveling knitter podcast. It looks a little dark. Um, I normally don't wear black, but that's for later. Welcome, my name is Steph and I am your host coming to you from Dayton, Ohio on September 23rd. I believe, is it the first day of fall or is it the second day of fall? It's the first weekend to fall and oddly enough it has been so hot. I mean 90 degrees hot and then today and yesterday basically this weekend it's been in the 50s. Um, crazy. So right now it's 73 so that's that's warm um, but in the 50s in the morning cold. I actually have a lot of stuff to talk to you about. I did not think I had a ton of stuff, but once I started gathering everything, I had to rewrite the show notes twice because I kept forgetting stuff. So let's just jump into it. For completed quests, nothing. But it's not that big of a deal because my current quest, Willow, which is in this amazing bag has had a lot of progress. Side note, if anyone knows what fabric this is, could you please tell me? Because I I did a Google search and I couldn't find it. Um, yeah, and what the, what the inside fabric is. Maybe it's, maybe Daisy Girl and Company had her own fabric designed. If she did, she did a fabulous job because I believe I've said it before, this may be my absolute favorite Disney fabric that I have seen. And I like Peter Pan, but I wouldn't say it's like an old time favorite uh, Disney movie. But this, this is so freaking adorable. Cause you've got Peter Pan here, you have Wendy, you have John and Michael. Michael's kind of squished. Um, you've got a nice moon, you have a bit of London. Oh, and there's star. It's just, it's beautiful. There's Big Ben up here. And then the inside is Neverland, which it's hard to see, but you've got, um, okay, this is hard. So you have the Indian area. I forget if it's called anything. You have a compass. You do have Tinkerbell right here. So she's in the lamp, which is what Captain Hook puts her in uh, when she's like spying or whatever. You have arrows. Um, it's just, it's so dainty and oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so what I'm actually making is the Willow sweater. And okay, so we're, it's looking a little complicated. Let's organize this a bit. So I have split for the front and back. So basically what is happening is I am, this is the back, I believe. And I have done one repeat of the pattern. So here's all of my front stitches are on waist yarn. It's just this yellow stuff that oddly enough, my roommate, five years ago gave to me. Uh, she said she was never gonna use it and so I've been using it as scrap yarn. <laughs> but so I've done one repeat of the pattern. I have quite a lot of stitch markers on here because I followed the directions and put stitch markers where there should be. So I've got this Ohio one. I made this one myself. I am from Ohio. I've lived most of my life here. Not all of it, but most of it. This little stitch marker is from Miss Babs. It was like when I bought yarn um, at Rhinebeck last year, you got like a little stitch marker on a card, which I thought was really nice. Just a simple stitch marker. And then I have this little glass fishy guy. So the reason I picked such a small one to go next to this is because over here, these two hit each other constantly and it's annoying. Uh, so this is a Cheshire cat oh you can't really see that can you um potentially maybe i don't know it's like the the cheshire cat 
is um, painted on his face. And then this is just a, a, a blue bead that I got. So I made those. I mean, obviously I didn't paint the Cheshire Cat on there. It was just um, at Hobby Lobby, so I bought it. And then over here, I have just a simple, I, I tend to use these ones a lot. They're just seed beads and then little tiny glass beads. So there. So yeah, I'm like, I am cruising, right? I'm not alternating skeins and I feel like you can't even tell. It's all natural. It's, I'm using, um, what is it called when you use water and heat and friction and you like connect the two strands of yarn together because it's made out of wool. I've been doing that, whatever that's called, I forget. Um, yeah, so I, like I said, I'm, I'm separated. Now, if you were gonna knit this, Willow, there happens to be a rata. Uh, so I knit, like I said, I knit one repeat and then I was looking at the pictures to see how much I was gonna, how, like how much further I was gonna have to do. And I noticed in the pictures, it was not looking the exact same that mine was looking. So then I, and I reread it, and I'm like, nope, I absolutely did what the pattern says. So I went on Ravelry, sure enough, there's a Rada, click on it, yeah, the, um, the setup row is wrong. So, I don't think this looks, this is gonna do much, but basically right here, so the setup row has you do purling, don't purl. This is supposed to just be knit. So, I'm not gonna rip it out because it's not that big of a deal, plus it's the back. So for the front, I will fix it, but the back, I'm just gonna leave the same. It's not gonna bother me at all. Plus, then I'll be able to see easily what's the front, what's the back. There's a pro. So yeah, if you're knitting Willow by Pam Allen, be sure to check the errata. If you look at the pictures, it's real easy, but for whatever reason, I trusted the chart. So there are two charts that you're working off of. Actually, there's three, no, there's two. And one of the charts I'm slightly confused about because in the pattern, it does not look like you cable. Like on the pictures, it doesn't look like you cable, but in the chart, you're cabling. So, um, and the errata said that one was fine. I haven't gotten to it yet, so I'll get to it when I get to it. Uh, but you have, this little dude, which is like um, the sleeve. So that's right here. And then you have a cable panel. The a lace panel is in the center. And then the cable panel, come here, on the, which would actually be the right side. And then you have the little sleeve dude again. So that's going swimmingly. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five full skeins left. So I'm doing really good because I bought 10. So I'm on my sixth, gosh. I'm on my sixth. I'm on my fifth skein and I pretty much just broke into it and I'm just, I'm now getting to the back. So I think I should have enough to make the sleeves like a nice length. Now, there's not much I can do about the body because I'm pretty much already doing the lace part, but so like here, I'll hold it up again. We'll just pretend this is the front. So I'll flip it around and okay. And then I'll scoot back onto my chair. So we're pretty much right here. I believe, because the sleeves are a bit dropped. So for right here, the sweater comes to slightly below where my jeans are. The sweater will be fine, I think, and I will block it if I need to. Pfft, blocking. Um, I did a photo sesh today, so I took my spike sweater which I hadn't blocked yet and I put it on and took some photos then I had like two other things that I hadn't woven the ends in so I spent two hours weaving in ends like my god do I hate that 
So I took some photos and now my Zweig is currently soaking. Is it like okay to soak your stuff for hours? Because that's what I do. I like to soak it for a really long time to make sure the smell stays, like the scent. So yeah, I am loving, I'm loving this. And I'm so excited to get this done and have two sweaters that I can like wear and be really proud of because I'm, the finished sweater that I had, um, I mean, I was proud at the time, but now I'm, no, I only wear it when I'm sick. I think I've mentioned it. Uh, yeah, it's coming along real nicely. It's just moving right along. Put it back in this awesome project bag. So yeah, I'm able to now put all of the yarn in the bag instead of having it in my New York photo box. Where's my, okay. I need a little bit of drink. And if you're guessing what's in here, it's water. I'm just really thirsty. I really want a chocolate chocolate. I really want a chocolate chip cookie, so I made them. And I don't have a stand mixer. I have a hand mixer, but I was just not feeling it. I just didn't want to get it out. So I was mixing it by hand and I just didn't mix the butter well. So the cookies are coming out really spread out. They still taste fine, but they're having to sit on the cookie mat for a lot longer because if I move them to the cookie tray, they literally like break apart and fall, <laughs> fall between the metal. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, anytime I make cookies, I always get so thirsty because I eat a lot of the dough and then I eat the fresh out of the oven cookies. That's actually my preferred method of eating cookies is fresh out of the oven. Like I don't like them cooling down. <laughs> So that's kind of weird, but it, don't, it makes me feel kind of sick as well. <sighs> Why do the things we love make us sick? Uh, yeah, um, so this mug is a 9-11 memorial mug. 9-11 uh, was um, two weeks ago. So it says on the back, honor, remember, reunite. It's a like a matte black mug and I got it at the 9-11 memorial that I went, I not that I, uh, which I went to in 2015, I think, February 2015. Yeah, I think so. February 14th, I had a Valentine's date with America. Yeah, side note, uh, love that mug, and um, I'm just drinking water. Nothing special there. All right, so moving into the next thing. Oh, um, it's not here. Give me a moment, I will find it. All right, I'm back. So the second thing that I have, um, or my second quest, are these socks! So, not a ton of progress, but I mean, the heels. So I did do the New Depths heel, and I, oop, needle down, and I really liked it. So I'm really hoping that the heel fits. Uh, so I still have to try it, um, but I'm really liking it. Side note, my coworkers were I don't know if amaze is the right word, but confused with how I was making a sock look like this. So I know I could have just said it's magic. I'm doing all of this because they were like, wow, you're gonna have like a lot of strings on the inside. And I was like, no, there's no strings because that's what it's designed to do. So I know ruin the magic, but I think they were still thoroughly impressed. Um, so the team that I'm on, I think I've, I've mentioned it before, I'm the only person that does my job. I have another girl who she comes in uh, about two weeks out of the month and then she helps me out to save my voice because I do a lot of talking. I love to talk, so it works well, but um, it's, a, it's a lot. Like, 
It's very repetitive. It's basically like an hour speech that I just say over and over and over every day. Very, like I even have jokes written into my speech. <sighs> so my, um, the team that's next to me, they, I know, I know most of them. Well, I mean, I know all of them, but I know most of them from the job that I used to do before when I was actually traveling a lot. And, um, but I didn't like work with them super closely. So they know that I knit, they're just not as aware of how much I knit. And um, they haven't, you know, gone to lunch with me or been in a hotel with me. And well, that sounds weird, but traveling, we're in a hotel. Um, so they just haven't gotten to listen to my speeches about knitting. So I think they're, they're still, you know, it's still a novelty when they see this. All right, so um, I've mentioned it before, but this is Opal Illusions in the color 9302? No, 9312. And it's a sports pilot. I don't know if that's a colorway, but it's, some, it's on there. I'm knitting them in the crazy trios, bing, 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 in size one. Oh my gosh, it's so faint. Is it a one? I don't know, it's a 2.0 millimeter. What the heck? Oh my gosh, it's... It's gone. It's gone. Good thing I have the box still. So it's a 2.0, whatever that is. That is what I'm knitting them on and I'm doing a 64 stitch. I still do not have my re sock recipe. Still working on it. I'll get there. I just don't knit socks like a ton to have gotten my sock recipe yet. And just like before, it is in a Tom's bag. And if you don't know what Toms are, um, they're shoes. I, I talked about the bag, but I don't think I actually ever mentioned that it's a shoe company. And uh, Toms, uh, for every shoe that you purchase, so when I buy a pair, a pair is donated to a child in need. And I believe it's different uh, countries in Africa. And um, they recently came out with a Disney line. <sighs> There's no Beauty and the Beast, nor is there a Tangled, but there's Cinderella and, ah, uh, I will probably have to buy some. I love when Disney is done in like a sketch form. So this, um, but yeah, if it's a sketch form, I also really like the, like the high fashion Disney princesses. Side note. ColourPop and Disney are doing a collection. ColourPop is a makeup brand. I will buy all of it. I'm buying all of it. And it's not even that expensive. I think it was like a hundred and some bucks for the whole collection, which is six lipsticks, three lip glosses, um, six eyeshadows, and a eyeshadow palette. So I don't, that's not a bad deal at all. I love makeup. Okay, so the next, the next work in progress is Asunder! So I did actually cast it on. So this is uh, a project bag that I showed in my last uh, podcast and I, this was on the horizon and I went ahead and cast it on. Asunder is a shawl by Lisa Much uh, from Northbound Knitting. And I was introduced to Lisa Much and Northbound Knitting by the Grocery Girls. And what I really, really like about Lisa Much is her patterns are awesome. They're always done in like the same colors. So it's such, it's like a blank canvas. Um, and I think that's, I think it's great. Uh, also, she does a lot of like, she does sales where it's like buy one get one free or she'll just uh, post one of her patterns for free and she has so many. So this is Asunder. Uh, I pretty much just started. So um, that's it right there. Now I am, this is a uh, fingering single ply. This is Primrose Yarn Co. in her Adelaide single 
in the charcoal and glitter colorway. I am loving it. Like, I, I would wear a sweater out of this. Like, I am loving this. Uh, so this is the front and my stitch marker is an earring. I hate the word hack. Like, why can't you just say tip? Like pro tip or something? Uh, but as a tip, if you've ever lost an earring and you're left with one, turn it into a stitch marker. That's what I did. So the colors I'm using, like I said, this is charcoal and glitter, um, Adelaide, Col Adelaide Cottage. That is a different yarn company. And her Adelaide Single Ply Primrose Yarn Co. And then Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the Juniper colorway. Bing! So this is the main body and then these are gonna be the drop stitches. It's weird to like, so, I've pretty much been knitting on Willow for the most part. I actually started this today because I wanted another work in progress. So um, I've been pretty much working on Willow and the um, the skeins are 50 grams and it's worsted so it's like I, you blow through them so fast and they're maybe like this big. So when I pulled these out I was like holy cow are they normally this big? Yeah they are. It's just the the one from Willow is, is small, which I didn't even say what the yarn was. I've said it before, but it is, is it Veil? Veil? Uh, Vista. Veil is a different one. It is Vista Mountaintop Yarns by Classic Elite Yarns. In, um, it's a 50% alpaca, 50% wool in a neutral color and the color is 6006. I have a hundred skeins of it. No, no, de definitely not. I have 10 skeins, a hundred grams each, which makes a thousand. About a hundred skeins of this one yarn, like, buh, I'd sell it. I can't know the same yarn over and over and over, not that much. All right, so yeah, um, I'm, I'm working on that shawl. It is a little bit weird to be knitting on size sevens for a fingering weight single ply shawl, but I think it is, it's gonna, I think it's gonna make a really nice drape. So those are the works in progress. I'm gonna bring my notes over. On the horizon. So on the horizon, um, Christmas. Yeah, I know, you may think I'm crazy, but I like to spread Christmas gifts out and so that my budget doesn't, doesn't take a hit. I want to start with Christmas and I wanna make like little amigurumi fruits and vegetables for all the office cats. Now there aren't physical cats in the office, but um, one, two, three, three, three people in my office and they're the three that I hang out with the most, like they are my friends outside of work, um, they all have cats. Like one of my friends has four cats the other friend has two and the other friend has two. So I thought, oh, and then my two, two of the three best friends also have cats. Um, and then another one of my friends has a cat. Literally everyone has cats. Only one person has a dog. Dogs are so much better. Uh, but anyway, so everyone has cats and I thought that I would crochet a bunch of like fruits and vegetables for them. Um, I thought that would be cute and would help me break through a lot of my acrylic stash. I really want to downgrade the acrylic that I have and just, if I need it, buy it and not stock, stock up on it. So that's my game plan. I want to do that. And my second on the horizon, is kind of coupled with Smaug's Trove. So, I'll show you on the horizon first. 
It is this tiny tassel shawl right there by Karen Fernandez. So it's pretty much a triangular shawl with little tassels on it. And the reason why this is on the horizon is because I bought this kit right here. So this is Hugh Loco, the Backyard Chicken Collection in her roosters or the roosters in the cream leg bar, which I looked it up. It is a type of rooster. I'm not a farm person. I don't know that much about roosters or chickens. And that's okay. So I looked it up. It just looks like a typical rooster to me. Sorry if you're you're into that. Um, but I love this. So this, they had a sample and it was that the shawl that I showed you and it was knit out of this. And I, I normally never buy yarn to knit what the sample is. Like sometimes I'll be inspired by the sample and I'll buy yarn to knit the sample, but never in the same color. Like this is the first time ever. I loved it so much. This is my first Hue Loco yarn, which I'm super excited about. Um, I've wanted to have Hue Loco yarn for a while. Um, so it's this beautiful, it's like a, a white with a bluish gray and then an ochre yellow with some speckles. And then the minis are like a, a greenish yellow ochre color and then a, a dusky salmon. It's coming out more right vibrant on the camera. Like this is coming out more highlightery than it, it actually is. Um, but mm, love it. In addition to that, I also purchased these two guys, which is from Magpie. This is, they're both her swanky sock, which is a 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. 378 yards, 115 grams. This one is Velvet Underground. It is a dark purple. And then this one is London Rain. So there's just a, um, I actually don't think there is any purple in this one, which I'm okay with. Um, I have plans for this. I'm going to make a sizzle pop out of these two. And then the other yarn acquisition is Valkyrie Fibers in her Jaeger Bomb colorway. And I guess this is from, it's, it says it's from her a AOT series, which is, um, I looked it up and I forget, but it is a, it is an anime or it's a manga. I just really love the colors. So it's a dusky purple, a lavender, a tan, and then a white really like that. So why did I buy all this yarn? Where did I go? I went to wool gathering, which I'll talk about at the end. So I purchased a couple other things. Tuft Woolen was there, or Tuft, I should say. I love this stuff. I love it. Um, I have purchased two sample sets. So the sample sets, you just get um, samples of their different scents. Um, and I love that, but I decided to buy two full bars. So this is eucalyptus lemon. I love eucalyptus. Mm. And then this one is royal apiary, which I really like as well. So tuft woolens is um, a wool sock soap. Sock soap. I mean, that's what it's called, tuft woolen sock soap. But it is a wool wash. And I'll be honest, this is what I use. I have some eucalyptus, um, but I loved the way that the tuft woolens came out so much more that that's all I use now. Now I'm gonna use up the rest of my eucalyptus, but this stuff just works so much better. Love it. And I do the typical thing, which is um, I would slice off a piece of it and then just use that instead of getting the whole thing wet. Then the last thing I purchased just, just look. They're scissors. They're little tiny scissors. 
Oh my goodness. So I saw them. I had to buy them. Um, this is from a brand called Kohana. So it's handmade in Japan. Now I looked it up. You can buy them um, from their website. I did not go to checkouts. I really don't know how much shipping is, but with the exchange rate, they're only around $12. So I spent 20 on them, um, which I still think is worth it. I mean, this whole thing, it's handmade and look how small it is. Oh, it's, it is the cutest, oh my, it's the cutest scissors that I've ever seen. So yeah, and you can uh, get a different color tassel. So uh, fiber friends that are in my life, you're getting little scissors for Christmas. Oh, so cute. Um, I brought, I showed them to my coworkers at work and they're like, why, it's so small, like what's the point? You can travel with it. And I mean, all I'm doing is cutting little tiny pieces of string. So I don't need, like, like, I'm not using it to cut paper. So they're like, oh, I get it. Okay. So you don't get it taken away at the airport. Um, other things. So I've been meaning to bring this or talk about this, but my friend made me some stitch markers and they are with these like crystals. So she saw them on the internet somewhere and she decided to try to make them herself. She did a fantastic job. Honestly, she is like the most crafty of my friends. So anything she does always turns out um, perfect or near perfect, which I mean, these guys turned out basically perfect. Um, and she did like this stuff, the, can you even like tell? But she did the wraps around them um, so it's wrapped with, uh, it just never wants to focus, but she did the metal wraps around it herself. I thought they turned, it, it turned out really good. So, yep. So she made me these, another set of stitch markers, never have enough. And then my other friend, um, I didn't even show this, uh, when I talked about the fabric, but when she went to Japan, she also got me a Brie, like a little chain thing. I'm gonna turn this into a stitch marker or something. I love Brie. Brie is one of my favorite cheeses. And it, it they did a really good job. It definitely looks like Brie. <laughs> oh, now I gotta find my shop, shop, find my notes again. We are at, yeah, that pretty much covers Smaug's Trove. So yeah, I did buy a lot. That's okay. We're going into the holiday season where I'm gonna not buy a lot for myself. So the next to last segment is a novel idea. And the book that I would like to talk about or recommend this time around is a Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. So this is the book that I picked for my, one of my book clubs and it's, it's awesome. So it's about, uh, you've got two main characters and one can jump between different Londons. So you've got Grey London, which has no magic, Red London, which is his uh, London, his world, and then you have White London, which is like real, it's like evil, and then you have Black London, which um, like no one knows about. It's it's like the stuff of nightmares. Basically, magic like ate everything, so they sealed it off. Um, so you can't go to Black London. No one really knows what's going on there. Um, and then our other main character is from Grey London and she's a girl, she's a thief, she wants more out of her life than what she's getting. She's poor, she doesn't have family, so um, they run into each other and then go off on an adventure. It's really good. It is a trilogy. This is the first one. All three of them are out, so it's always nice to read a fantasy series where all the books are out. Uh, so yeah, this is the first one and it's not very long. It's like 
um, just shy of 400 pages. Like literally, it's 398 pages. I highly recommend this book though, if you like fantasy, even if you don't know if you like fantasy, uh, I recommended this because the people in my book club, which are my coworkers, they don't they don't read fantasy. Like they've read Harry Potter, but that's pretty much it. Uh, so I wanted to read a fantasy book since uh, we're going through all the genres and we're not gonna leave my favorite genre out. Uh, and so far they've all loved it. So I'm really, really happy about that. V.E. Schwab, um, she, that's her pseudonym. Her name is Victoria Schwab. Uh, Victoria Schwab is if she writes um, young adult. V.E. Schwab is for when she writes adult. Okay, so the last section is life as I see it, uh, where I talk about what's been going on with me for the last two weeks. Uh, so this morning I ran a 5K. It was a color run, which I'd never done before. And um, if you've never done a color run or you don't know what it is, you basically run and people throw colored powder at you. Um, I don't know, like, I enjoyed it, but my shirt did not get a lot of color on it. Like when I was done looking at everyone else's compared to mine, mine was blue. Like you couldn't see the orange, you couldn't see the yellow, you couldn't see the pink, you couldn't see the purple, you just saw the blue. So I'm a little disappointed in that, but at the same time, like my shirt looks really nice. Like it's, it's very, it's like blue in the center and then it kind of fades out and then there's nothing on the back. So they just didn't bother to shoot me in the back. Also weird phrasing. So I soaked it in vinegar. You're supposed to iron it. Uh, I think I'm, I'm just, I'm letting it dry outside, soaked in vinegar. It's been out there for five hours now. It's probably not gonna dry, but I'm just gonna stick it in my um, washer. So did that. Um, all the stuff that I bought was from Wool Gathering, which is a yarn festival in Yellow Springs, Ohio, uh, at a farm called Young's Dairy Farm. It was really nice. Um, I went with one of my coworkers who, he was such a good sport. He doesn't really knit, he doesn't really craft, but he went there with me. Um, kind of the annoying thing, like he's, he's, he's gone to some crafty things with me before and everyone always assumes that he's my boyfriend or he's my husband, which is a little frustrating. Frustrating. Um, he's gay, <laughs> first off, so, um, I mean, he kind of plays along, but I, I know it irritates him. I mean, it irritates me because some of the comments that people make, like, um, and I know they're just trying to make talk, but they'll go, oh, you should let her buy something. Excuse me. I make my own money and I will buy whatever the fuck I want without someone else's permission. What? It just, and it's not like that's only happened once. Um, both times we have gone somewhere, multiple people have said it. <sighs> and it's ladies that are saying it. I don't know if they think they're being funny, um, but I don't think it's very funny. It's irritating. It's very irritating. Like, it's more so irritating that they're telling the man that I'm with that he can allow me to spend money on my crafts. It's 2018. I will, I will use my own money and I will buy it like without anyone's permission. Just, just, that's just ridiculous. So yeah, a little annoying, but uh, anyway, wool gathering was pretty fun because it's on the dairy, uh, on the dairy. It's on the farm. I got cheese curds and ice cream. Holy moly, I got a lot of ice cream. Uh, my peanut butter and chocolate is my favorite combo, so they had like a Reese's um, parfait thing. So it had a Buckeye, it had chocolate ice cream, it had um, peanut butter ice cream, it had 
whipped cream, it had chocolate syrup, peanut butter syrup, and Reese's Pieces. I couldn't finish it. And I feel like I'm, I'm real good at finishing dessert. And I couldn't finish it. It was so good though. Like I would eat it right now if I could. And the Buckeye was delicious too. So um, yeah, the wool gathering was pretty nice. Um, Yellow Springs is really nice. Uh, there's, there's a really pretty sunflower like patch. Um, you could like go and buy sunflowers there. That was really cool. If you're in the area, I had never been to Yellow Springs before and when someone was telling me about it, they were telling me it was similar to Athens, Ohio. I get that vibe. Um, definitely, I parked my car, walked down the street, and immediately smelled, um, <laughs> pot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was there, and there was hookah bars, um, very hippie kind of vibe in local stores and stuff, so, um, if you don't know what Athens is, um, it's the town that OU, Ohio University, which is the college I went to, so, um, it's a very hippie-ish. Not in like a bad way, but it's a very slow, sleepy town. Um, what else? I bought a shelf. Pretty fantastic shelf, actually. Uh, it took me maybe like an hour and a half to build the shelf, um, and then decorate it on top of that. So an hour and a half to build the shelf, and then another hour to decorate it. It looks fabulous. It's really nice. It's got all my fall stuff on it. Um, so I did that last week and then coming up, October. So uh, my friends and I, we are doing another read reading challenge. So I think it was March. Uh, my friends and I challenged each other to see who could read the most pages. I lost, but if I recall, I lost by less than a hundred pages, which still a little bitter. Um, I got sick one of those weekends. So I lost like an entire weekend of reading. If I hadn't, I would have won. My friend won fair and square. She got two books out of it. Uh, this go around, I'm trying to get a couple other people to join in. And I thought we could all make bookmarks and give them to each other. So like do some really cool DIY bookmarks. Um, I really enjoyed chopping up cards that I've received and using those as gift marks gift marks, bookmarks. Um, so I think I'm gonna do something like that, but um, use like some heavy cardstock and like stick them on top of it and um, maybe laminate them. I don't know, is laminating kind of like a, a weird like elementary school thing to do? Um, but yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna do some paper work with like all the scrapbook paper that I have because I keep buying scrapbook paper yet I don't scrapbook anymore. I just love the paper. It's so pretty. <sighs> oh well. Well, I think that is uh, enough for this podcast today. If you have any questions at all, all of my contact information is uh, flashed on the screen at the beginning. But just in case, it is Lulu is crazy on Ravelry. Lulu is crazy on Instagram for now, until I decide to make an Instagram for the podcast. But for now, it's still my personal one. Um, uh, Goodreads, I've mentioned before, I'm a big reader, so I'm on Goodreads. I'm pretty sure I'm Lulu's crazy on Goodreads as well. If not, whatever. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions or you feel like to chatting to me, just leave a comment below or send me a message on any of the social medias I have mentioned. Um, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys in the next chapter. Bye!